Thank you. Quick show of hands. Who has their perfect job? Oh, quite a few. Near perfect job. A little bit close, somewhat near. Nowhere really near and not really to get anything to get excited about. Not too many of those. Okay, so we've got quite a smattering here, um, which is, which is very, uh, very uplifting, I have to say. Um, it's odd, isn't it, how your perfect role isn't actually ever advertised. Your best mate never says, ah, just seen that great role, be perfect for you. Or that headhunter just doesn't phone you up and says, you know what, Katie, I've got the absolutely perfect role for you. It'll suit you down to the ground. Now, the reason why your perfect job generally doesn't happen is because your perfect job doesn't exist yet. I want to talk to you about working towards work that, that will work for you. Uh, and essentially, that if you have a perfect job and you're very happy about it, then fantastic. That's great. But there are millions of people the world over that absolutely dread Monday morning and just can't wait till they get to Friday evening, till they can go off and find their passion, excitement, and lifetime ambition and fulfillment somewhere else doing something else. But there is another way. Actually, there's lots of different ways. Um, I wrote a book about it, but I wanted to call the book There Is Another Way, but uh, it's called uh, And What Do You Do? But I want to talk to you about this thing called portfolio careers. And it was first uh, a term first put about by uh, management writer Charles Handy. And it essentially refers to doing two or more jobs for different employers. And uh, Charles says what many people want is not more life and less work, but a better balance of the different types of work in their life. And he said, I mean, I would add that there's also this sense of uh, we want meaning, we want fulfillment, we want uh, to do our really great work actually at work because we spend so much time, so much of our precious time actually at work. We want to make it count. So the world of work has changed and is changing daily. And my co-author, Dr. Barry Hobson, and I, uh, we interviewed quite a number of people for the book. And we firmly believe that there are no jobs, only projects. No jobs, only projects. And that's a very different way of looking and thinking about the, the world. It may be a one-day project. It might be a one-week project. It might be a six-month project. It might be working three days a week for six months. It might be a 12-year gig for the same company. But basically, you own your own means of production. You are the CEO of Me Inc., who is deciding to hire out your services for a specific period of time. That's a different way of thinking about it. Now, portfolio careers can be expressed in, in many different ways. We interviewed around 35 people for the book. We interviewed one lady who had eight jobs. Um, she worked in, um, in health, in fitness, um, in teaching. She was also a volunteer for some of those roles as well. So actually, she had more than eight jobs, um, which is quite incredible. We also interviewed um, a man who was a theatre lighting director, very good theatre lighting director. And uh, he also, when he wasn't doing that, he was uh, a photographer and also a Reiki master. And he liked to combine all of those, all of those elements. One of my favourite persons that, uh, that, that actually I interviewed was a lady who was an in-house lawyer. And when I say in-house, I actually mean in her house, um, literally, because she was a portfolio lawyer for seven different small companies. She would have shared resources, as the HR terminology would have it. Um, but when she kind of got a little bit bored or she wasn't quite so busy, she'd go into her kitchen and she'd start baking cakes because she absolutely has a passion for cakes. Now, this woman does not just do fairy cakes. I'm talking about cakes. It's almost like pimp my cake or somebody dubbed it cake porn. And actually, if you go and see her website, you'll see what I, what I mean about it. I mean, these are completely over-the-top decorations, but she would f uh, photograph it. And she would put the, the recipe up and, and blog about it. And when I first met her, she was, she would, she'd just been a finalist in uh, TV's MasterChef. And um, she, she'd written her first book and published her first cookery book. She'd written two others, which were just about to be published. She was writing for a cookery magazine as well. Um, and her real passion, she said, was to open a tea room and, and a cookery school. And I have to say, I think she's probably well on her way to actually achieving that. But the portfolio career doesn't have to be two or more jobs at the same time. We also interviewed a lady who was 
um, an accountant for six months of the year. And then she used to run a, she was a ski chalet host for the other six months a year, somewhere rather nice in France, um, in, in, the, uh, in the mountains there. So many combinations. It doesn't actually matter what the combination is. There's a great quote by Penelope Trunk. Some of you may have heard of her. She's a, quite a renowned blogger. And she said, a portfolio career is not the same thing as holding down three bad jobs and wishing you could figure out what to do with yourself. Rather, it's a scheme that you pursue purposefully and positively as a way to achieve financial or personal goals or a mixture of both. And I love that. I love that definition. I have a first-hand experience of this. Um, when I left school, I went to Leeds University, first person in my family to ever go to university, very, very excited. I studied accounting and finance for a year and then left because um, I hated it, quite frankly, um, not to put too fine a point on it. Um, I, started, I went to work in a gym. I became a uh, health club manager. I started selling fitness assessment um, software around the world. Um, I had a, a ridiculously bad relationship and uh, had to get away as quickly as possible. And um, I discovered this thing called filth. I don't know, you may have heard of it. Um, <laughs> it's, not, it's not what you think it is, or maybe not what you think it is. It stands for Failed in Leeds, Try Hong Kong. Okay? <laughs> and actually, at this stage in my life, um, I didn't really have an awful lot to lose. So I thought, this is a great idea. Um, this is what I'm going to do. So um, as well as personal training, when I got there, I kind of smooth-talked my way into TV. I was interviewed because I was one of the first personal trainers in Hong Kong. And uh, when I saw the, the piece coming out on TV, I thought, in that arrogant 23, 24-year-old way, I thought, actually, I could do better than that. So I polished my CV um, so it shone. I didn't actually lie. I just polished it immensely. And, uh, and they, they, they gave me a job um, as, a, as a holding a microphone on a kid's educational program. Of course no money. In fact, it cost me because I had to travel around the territory and had to pay for that myself. Um, but I absolutely loved it. I absolutely loved it. And within, and then I moved to um, another, the other channel, TVB, and I worked on an adult's um, uh, entertainment program. So within about six weeks, I was interviewing Sir Richard Branson. I had breakfast with Sir Richard Branson when he launched his flight from, uh, from London to Hong Kong. Um, Jose Carreras, um, Larry King, uh, Diana Ross, Miss Ross, um, as she likes to be known. Um, and, and I just thought, this is fantastic. This is what I want to do. This is really, really good. But, so I had a portfolio career, not out of necessity, but actually through a process of finding out things that I could actually do. Some other things I did. I, I, I did the, uh, presented the in-flight movie reviews for Cathay Pacific when they used to have those, those sort of things. Um, I acted in a locally made movie, which uh, thankfully never saw the light of day. And, uh, and I also, my favorite job actually of all was to do voiceovers, get this, Voiceovers for uh, female kung fu movies. <laughs> uh, and, and I just not, actually, because there is a skill in going, uh, 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 uh. Um, it's not a talent that everybody can possess, but it was quite well paid, I have to say. Um, the point being that I didn't actually know I could do any of this. I, I didn't go, um, I didn't have any training, I didn't have any qualifications, um, I didn't go to the right school. I didn't know I could do kind of any of this stuff. Three years later, I came back to the UK. Um, I worked for the BBC in the regions, BBC News, for, for three years. Uh, and then I got a job working for Channel 5 News, a, a, a national program, um, and stayed there for eight years. Um, and in that time, I had, I had two children. So kind of skipping forward um, to 2005, when I had one of my greatest opportunities, um, I was made redundant. And redundancy, I got the di dictionary definition, the state of no longer being needed or useful. <laughs> I hope you've got that. Um, and I was quite a little bit, little bit depressed about this, but I'd already started doing other jobs as well. And actually, the great thing in Latin, though, I found out the Latin derivative, and I'm sure somebody will know this, but it actually means surging up. I was rather pleased about that, because I think I've rather surged up since then and, um, and created a portfolio career, um, helping people in business to communicate with impact. So how many people have a portfolio career? I'm sure you're dying to ask this one. Um, it's very difficult to tell in the UK because these, these numbers aren't really kept, but around 1.2 million out of a workforce of 29 million people are currently, at least that many are working that way. Um, there's four, more than 4 million people who are self-employed, um, so they could also be having portfolio careers. And in the States, there are nearly 7 million people who have two or more jobs, but also a third, a third of 
the, uh, the US workforce are actually freelance. So many of those will have um, a portfolio career as well. People tell me that it's a bit risky working this way, and they'd like to do it, but they really can't afford to do it. Um, so when we were researching the book, I asked people about how they do it. Essentially, there's four ways. The first way is to get somebody else to pay for it. So stay in your full-time role, basically, and do it at, at weekends and, and, and a little bit later on in the, uh, in the evening. The second way is, is actually to save some money. So save three or six months' money so that you don't actually have to be earning from day one and get yourself going. That works quite well. Um, third way is to uh, work part-time. So you might work a job three days a week and then create your portfolio career another two or three days a week. And then the fourth one is leap and the net will appear approach, which only one of our interviewees actually took. Um, and I have to say, it is that literally you are jumping off a cliff, but it has many benefits in the sense, and particularly our younger kind of Gen Y people, because actually there isn't too much to lose, and the process of actually hurling yourself off that cliff, which I'm sure we'll hear about later, um, is, is quite a liberation. And actually, it does make you focus on getting a job. It's not a work style for everyone. There are negatives. Um, it can be lonely. Um, it can be fragmented, uncertain. You don't get paid holidays. You don't get paid pension. You have to, as Charles Handy says, uh, be happy living a cash flow life, not a salary life. But there are many, many upsides, of course. And um, the great one is that you're autonomous, you complete autonomy in terms of what you do. And that's incredibly liberating. You get to use all your skills and talents. If you think of any one job that you're doing, are you using all those skills and talents in that one role? And the answer may well be no. Um, you can work around your existing commitments. So if you've got children like myself or you've got people that you need to look after, you can work around those, of course. And, um, and there is this thing of pay. Um, there's no upper limit on what you can earn. There's no lower limit on what you can earn as well, but there's no upper limit. And actually, everybody that we interviewed was either earning exactly the same as they were in, in their previous full-time role or a little bit more. Most people were earning a little bit more. One guy we spoke to was earning three times as much. So in that sense of how much you want to go for it, that's entirely up to you. I've worked this way for about seven years now, and I've got two young children. A husband has also got a portfolio career. And, and I have to say, now I, I can't think of any other way of actually working. And um, I was thinking about this in terms of my portfolio, my work portfolio, and thinking, actually, there's probably about four different types of, of, of ways that I work. One is kind of very challenging, high-specification work that takes a huge amount of my, of my brain power and focus, uh, of which I get paid really well for. The second bit is the simpler kind of paid work, where actually I can kind of just show up just show up, but more or less just show up and do it. The third bit is the kind of non-paid work. So I work on um, some training programs for, for um, helping students, young people in the city, and also networking I would include in that as well. And then fourthly is kind of study work and writing work, again, which, which aren't hugely um, well paid in terms of money, but actually kind to go to build the portfolio and build the brand and all the rest of it. So... Many people we interviewed talked about doing great work. Um, and despite the products being challenging, doing their best work at work. And I'm sure you've seen the book or heard of the book, uh, Flow, and the author, Mihai Csikszentmihalyi, um, very strange name, but he talks about this idea of us being in flow where the challenge, our perceived challenge, is just a little bit out of our reach. It's just a little bit beyond what we think we can do. But we go for it. We strive for it. We reach for it. Time stands still. You know, a whole day can go past, and you don't, you know, it just doesn't register. You're in that flow. You're in the groove. And he says there are two reasons why flow doesn't always happen at, 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 at regular workplaces, bigger workplaces, corporate workplaces. And he says the first one is that goals aren't clear. People aren't sure exactly what their role in the greater scheme of things is. And secondly, he talks about um, feedback. Feedback always isn't necessarily direct and helpful, um, and sometimes there just isn't any at all. So with a portfolio career, you don't have these two problems. Um, generally, the goals are very, very clear. You absolutely know what your project is. And you also, the feedback is, is swift, and sometimes it's, it's brutally direct. Um, but you know where you stand. So I love the quote from Don Tapscott. Has anybody read uh, the book Wikonomics? I think it's a, it's a lovely book, and there's a lovely quote in it. And they say, our work may still largely define who we are but our employers no longer will. 
our sense of stability and our sources of encouragement, learning and growth, and our careers will come from communities of practice and our engagements with like-minded peers who we meet and keep in touch with online, and not necessarily our long-term relationships. Rather, the people we meet at work join the personal networks that we have, that we create, as we move from organization to organization. And we may be more rapidly moving from organization to organization. Most people here will have between six and ten jobs, in the old-fashioned sense, in their lifetime. Um, just to give you a, a, a sense of, of, of how I work and some other portfolio people work, uh, I, have a, I had last year about 15 clients and maybe about 25 projects. Um, and that's just in, in one year. So you're, you're selling yourself continuously. So rather than saying jack of all trades and master of none, I quite like to say um, jack of many trades and master of some, which is a nicer way of putting it. Gordon McKenzie, who wrote Orbiting the Giant Hairball, and I do recommend you read that. It's a fantastic book. He kind of ran a renegade group in Hallmark Cards in the States. And um, as you can tell, the name Orbiting the Giant Hairball. He says, uh, you have a masterpiece inside of you, one unlike that that's ever been created or ever will be. If you go to your grave without painting your masterpiece, it will not get painted. No one else can paint it for you, only you. And maybe you can paint your masterpiece working for one company. But if not, a portfolio career is worth thinking about. It's certainly not a work style for everyone. As I said, you have to be willing to embrace uncertainty, change, challenge, and focus. But if you can embrace these, even in these economically choppy times, you really can create your perfect job. Thank you. <laughs>